Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. It's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired and taken care of and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about four steps for making your cold marriage hot. My guest Kaylee's marriage suffered from a lack of connection and was filled with fighting. She was so tired because she felt like the only adult, but not anymore. Today, she says her relationship is wonderful and that they are happy and they play and giggle and flirt a lot. She's going to share the steps she took to make her marriage so connected again so you can have that too. And then I'll be giving out the worst relationship advice of the week award, which is abominable. And I don't think it's that uncommon. I think you've probably heard it before, but hopefully you didn't fall for it. All of that's coming up. But first, let's talk about four steps for making your cold marriage hot. If you've ever wondered if your husband even loves you anymore, then you've probably experienced him being distant and cold or more interested in his phone or the TV than spending time with you like my husband was. Or your husband disrespects you speaks harshly and criticizes your parenting or housekeeping. Either way, it's so angering and hurtful. You're probably wondering if there's any hope for having the kind of relationship you deserve, or maybe you just married the wrong guy. Here are four tips to inspire love so you can get your husband's attention and fix your marriage for good. Step one, be irresistible. Oh, I know you're thinking that's easier said than done, but when you're feeling hurt, it's easy to say things like, you treat me like I don't exist, or you never call because you don't care about me, or you don't even make an effort to change. You're just calling it like it is. You're doing your best to express your feelings and your needs. When all else has failed, how are you supposed to wake him up? The problem is, That even constructive criticism is, well, critical. If you've tried this approach, then you already know too well that it doesn't get you very far in restoring the connection you want. He wants to succeed as your husband, and you pointing out that he's not just makes things worse. You might be thinking, so what if I'm critical? He's being critical too, and inconsiderate, and he doesn't seem to care that I'm upset. And I know all too well how to justify my words by pointing to his bad behavior. But the problem is that doesn't get me any closer to snuggling or the deep conversations I like to have together. If you're lonely for his time, attention, or affection, like I was, try these three magic words. I miss you. I miss you. My student Charlene was stressed about her husband sleeping on the sofa. She couldn't sleep with the tension in the air, so she went out there and started to point out the error of his ways. And then she caught herself. She knew that criticism wasn't very attractive, so she used another magic phrase to clean it up. She said, I apologize for being disrespectful when I criticized you. Now that her side of the street was clean, She vulnerably showed her softer side by saying what she really meant, which was simply, I miss you. Turns out that was irresistible. He got in bed with her 10 minutes later. True story. Step two, the smile campaign. Your man's shortcomings, his part in the breakdown of your marriage, and the changes he needs to make are probably crystal clear to you. It's so frustrating and discouraging when you're trying to get him to change and he just won't. It's not very empowering either. And that's because you can't change anyone but yourself. And with no control over him making any changes, you become the victim. But you're no victim. In fact, you have so much power as a woman, as the keeper of your relationship. You have the power to change the culture of your marriage single-handedly Without his conscious knowledge or effort, he doesn't have to read any books or meet with any marriage counselors. He doesn't have to do anything consciously to become the man that you fell in love with. Now, it takes a lot of courage to 
let the change start in you. It means owning the tiny things that you may have done that weren't perfect, even though his behavior seems like the much bigger problem. It means doing something contrary to what you've been doing. And that's usually pretty uncomfortable. Here's an example. Let's say your husband is pretty neglectful or he's always staring at his phone. How can that have anything to do with you, right? He's the one that's choosing to put his attention elsewhere, right? Especially if you've tried telling him he needs to pay attention to you more. But if your husband looks into his wife mirror and sees all his faults reflected back to him in your eyes, he's not going to want to look too often. And sure, he'd like to get the reflection he once got from you back when you saw the best in him. But if you're so hurt and angry that he hasn't seen that esteem in your eyes for a while, well, it could be like asking him to hug a porcupine. So the contrary, courageous thing to do might be to go on a smile campaign. What if you decided to just smile when he came through the door instead of the typical, how was your day or what do you want for dinner? What if you just let him know how happy you are to see him? Chances are he'll want to spend more time with such a shiny wife mirror and he'll want to share more with you too. Haven't you always wanted him to open up to you? Well, the more you just listen without contradicting or advising or criticizing him, the more he'll want to. Step number three, work on the right things. I know, I know it's, it's kind of hard to light up when you're exhausted or you're overwhelmed, working, shuttling kids around, getting dinner on the table, dreading the mountain of dirty laundry and worrying about your marriage on top of all that. You might think I'm asking you to become a Stepford wife. Absolutely not. I'm inviting you to be 100% authentic. Here are two key questions for honoring yourself. They are, how do you feel and what do you want? So you could be asking yourself, how do I feel? What do I want? And the answer might be as simple as, I feel tired. I want a nap. But it's amazing how things can turn around after a 30-minute rest. After some sorely needed me time, everything might look right with the world again. Your husband isn't so annoying anymore. Maybe he's even cleaned up when you got out of the way. Or maybe he played with the kids to tire them out so they'll go to bed easily. Self-care is like pixie dust. And it's the indispensable first step to having an intimate relationship. What would you do if only you had the time? What did you used to do for fun back when you attracted him? The more frivolous, the better, I say. I mean, take a cooking class or kick up your feet and read instead of doing those dishes or go on that wine tasting day trip with your friends. And if you feel guilty, do it anyway. I mean, what's worse, taking time away on your own and coming back happy to see them or being an overburdened, unpleasant toothache of a person who's always with her family? If not for yourself, then do it for your relationship. Filling your self-care tank increases your magnetism and makes you an irresistible goddess of fun and light. And there's no surer way to rekindle the spark. Step four, turn up the gender contrast. Here's one more piece of conventional wisdom to ignore, and that is date night. I mean, just adding date night to the list of chores, you know, right between scrub the toilets and clean the garage, Does that really inspire romance? I think not. If you want to get the romance back, try dialing up the gender contrast instead. And one way to increase your femininity and his masculinity is becoming more receptive. So if he does the dishes, it might be tempting to say, now, how about wiping off the counters? Like I used to do, embarrassingly. Instead, you could receive graciously, even if he loaded the dishwasher wrong. Even if he only did a few dishes, you want the magic phrase for receiving? Thank you. That's it. Or you could say, thank you. I'm so happy you did that. When you focus on receiving, all sorts of things will start coming your way to the point that you might feel guilty receiving them all. Like say your husband is 
already taking care of the kids' bath time and their bedtime, and he gives you a massage while watching a movie with you, and then he offers to get up early so you can sleep in. Yes, this is a real-life example, and it might be just too much to take, but I invite you to receive graciously anyway. As he sees you being so pleasable, he'll want to do even more to make you happy. As you express your gratitude so freely, he'll express more appreciation for you too. Here's to having the power to change the culture in your relationship. Now, how will you use it? If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fix a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. My guest Kaylee's marriage suffered from a lack of connection and was filled with fighting. She was so tired because she felt like the only adult but not anymore. Today, she says her relationship is wonderful and that they are happy and they play and giggle and flirt a lot. She's going to share the steps that she took to make her marriage so connected again so you can have that too. Kaylee, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. I'm so excited to get to hear your story. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. So tell us, start in the beginning with um, the breakdown that was happening. What, What were things like? in the battle days? So I can even like go back to like, even before we were together, we, I can go back to like being like a child and, and being in control over everybody. Um, and I'm the oldest girl. And so for me, I felt like that was my role to like control everything. And so I did, I controlled you know, my siblings, I can, I even controlled my mom, you know, she'd go around and tell people, oh, this is my other mother. Like, you know, and she'd go around <laughs> and tell everybody. And as a kid, I didn't think anything of it. You know, I just, oh, whatever. Yeah, I am her mom. That's right. <laughs> um, and so I did, I, I grew up with a lot of control that way. And then my parents had like a really good, good, good marriage. Um, and then my dad, suffered from drug abuse and ended up divorcing in my late teen years. Um, and so that was really hard to go through that and, you know, see that. And now I can like make some of the connections that some of like my mom may have like been in contribute to that and how it could have been differently. So then we'll talk about my husband. We started dating and there was another girl that was like, trying to break us up. And I was like, uh, no, this isn't happening. And I was like, you know, you can't talk to her anymore. You, you know, we're going to block her off our Facebook account and we're going to combine to Facebook. And I am able to see she's trying to talk to you and break us up. And so I was in control even before we were even married. And so I was all over his paper all the time. And he also had struggled with porn and I had no idea. And so this was even before we were married. Um, I ended up finding out and that was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through. Um, And it was like right after he proposed to me, I found out. And so... The day I found out, I we were actually at his parents' house and like it was just heart wrenching. And we were downstairs and I came upstairs and I just sat in his room and I'm just like, Do I leave? Do I figure this out with him? Like, like my whole gut just wanted to walk out the door. But I felt like I needed to stay. Um, and so I did end up staying and we have talked about it and I was, because of that, like I didn't have any trust. Like first thing I had no trust. 
And because of the situations in the past with my dad, I struggled with trust anyways. Um, And so I just, I had no trust. And so that was like first key, like, obviously I can't trust him with this. And so that made me be more all over his paper because that was proof. Like he can't be trusted, you know? Um, And growing up, I didn't have a whole lot of money. And so being married, I felt like that was my job to make sure that things were getting paid for. And, and so I took control of the money, all of it. Every last cent was, I was in charge of. And there was one time I remember after we had gotten married, it was probably like a couple of weeks after we got married and I was scrolling through our account and it showed that, that he had bought, like spent 30 bucks on a game on his phone. And I was like, I came on glued on him. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. You spent 30 bucks on a game. And he didn't think anything of it. He was like, yeah. I was like, that's a lot of money for a game on your phone. Like all over, like, you know? And so that like was the first thing, you know? And then um, he, uh, we went to go file our taxes And so he filed his taxes wrong and we ended up owing a ton of money. And so like all these things were adding up to like, why would I let him control the money if Mm -hmm. all these things are happening? Like he obviously doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't. Like we ended up owing our taxes. He's blowing money on games on his phone. Like there's no point in me trusting him with this money. And so I didn't. Um. And like, there was, there was finally a breakdown. (laughs) There was things that I wasn't like noticing until after the breakdown, but like, he wasn't wearing his wedding ring. He didn't want to cuddle me in bed. Like he would scoot farthest away from me in the bed. And I was like, and every time I'd ask him about it, he, you know, he had an excuse, you know, oh, I forgot to wear my wedding ring and oh, I wasn't comfy. So I rolled over or whatever. But like deep down inside, like me emotionally, I was like, that, like, there's something else wrong. Like what is going on? And so I was pregnant with my third. So I'm kind of crazy. I've had four kids in four years. So <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I was pregnant with my third. I was right into my second trimester. I had just gone off of work. Um, I work a full-time job and he works a full-time job. Uh, we're always go, 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 go. Um, and so I decided that after work, I was exhausted. I had two young kids. I had a two-year-old, a one-year-old, and I was pregnant with my third. I was exhausted. So I was going to take a nap. And my sister was there and I said, Hey, listen, when my husband gets home, wake me up. Um, and so she was like, okay, whatever. Well, he ended up not getting home till later. And it was closer to bedtime. And so then I was like frantic waking up when he finally got home and I was super stressed out. And I had simply just asked him to help do the dishes. Okay. Well, he had had a bad day at work. And so he came in very hot and, you know, he was like, and rolled his eyes. And I was like, fine, forget it. I'll take control. I'll do it. And he snapped and he slammed the cupboards. We yelled at each other and he left. And that's the first time he had ever left an argument. We've always had like just little arguments over silly things, but that was the first time he left. And I was like distraught. I was like, oh my gosh, he just left me. And so what does every girl do? They call their best friend. (laughs) So I called her and I was like, listen, like it wasn't even anything big. I just asked him to help. Like, I don't, understand why he left me like it was awful and she's like you know maybe just give him some space you know and and so I let it go for a little bit and and then I tried to call him and he didn't answer and I tried to call him and he didn't answer and I was like oh my gosh what what can I do you know um and so I like started writing why all the reasons why I loved him and I ended up writing down 35 reasons why I loved him Um, and then I finally got him to answer the phone. And the first thing he says is I'm done. I want a divorce. And I was like, what? 
like, where did this come from? I had no idea. None. He's like, forget it. I'm done. Like, what do you mean you're done? He's like, you're abusive. You're controlling. I'm done. And I was like, what? And like, he wasn't coming around. I was like, well, maybe let's try counseling. You know, like, you know, I've helped you through your problems and things. Like if you feel like I've got weaknesses, then you should be patient with me and let's you know work on it. And he's like, no, I don't want to work on it. I don't want to be with you. I'm done. And I was wow. like, and you're pregnant with your third yeah. child. Yeah. You two little teeny people. Oh yeah. Yep. And oh I try God. to like use that too. I'm like, you know, what about the kids? He's like, they don't know. They're too young. And I was like, no, but they will know. Like, this is a big deal. Um, and he's like, I'm not, I'm done. I'm staying at my parents' house tonight. And so to add to it, I didn't know where he was. So I called his dad and I was like, I don't know where he is. I'm freaking out. Like, I don't know if he's in a good place. I don't know if he's safe. I don't know anything. So his dad ended up calling him and asking him if he was safe. Um, and he did up saying he was with a friend and he was safe. Well, as I was talking to him on the phone, he accidentally hit the video call button and I found out where he was and he was at my best friend's house. The one I just got off the phone with. You're kidding. No. And so I got on his, because I was controlling like that, I got on his call history and I had seen how much they've been talking to each other, texting each other. He had called her minutes before he walked into the door that night that we got in the fight. Minutes before she he got into the door. And so not only is my husband yelling at me and telling me he wants a divorce, he's with my best friend. And I was like, well, do you love her? Like, and he's like, yeah, I love her, but I'm not in love with her. And so he admitted to having like an emotional affair with her. And I was like, well, were you guys doing anything? Well, that made them both mad that I accused them of doing that. But what else was I supposed to do? Like, he left me. She hid him from me. Like she knew he was going out there and didn't say anything to me. But I was the bad guy. Like I was the one being controlling. I was the bad guy. And so I lost my best friend and my husband in a matter of minutes. And I had no idea what I had done wrong. No oh, idea. I gosh. didn't even see it coming. No red flags or anything. My mom's like, well, is he with your friend? And I was like, no, there's no freaking way. Sure enough, that's where he was. So he ended up coming home that night. It was super, super late. And he's like, I don't want to lay with you. I just want to... Well, he first was like, I'm just going to come get my stuff. And I'm staying at my parents' house. And I was like, no, stay. Like, don't leave. Let's work on this. Like, don't leave me. Um, and so he ended up... Um, it ended up being super late and he ended up staying, but he didn't sleep with me. He slept on the couch and I didn't sleep. I sat on the chair, just sitting there, just devastated. Oh. Um, and then that morning he had woken up and he texted me and was like, can you come, come lay with me? And, and so I was like, yeah, I guess, you know, and I went over there and he held on to me, but it felt empty. Like I just, like, I didn't even know what to think. Like, he still was, you know, saying he wanted a divorce, but he wanted me to lay next to him. And so I was like all sorts of emotions and I didn't know what to feel or how to feel or even what to do. And I had called into work and he didn't. And so he went off to work and I was left all day, like with my thoughts and what I was supposed to do and how I was supposed to fix things. And um, he finally ended up coming home and his parents wanted to talk to us. Cause I ended up telling his dad that he was done with me and he wanted a divorce. And his dad's like, no, let's, let's talk it out, you know? And, and so he had come home and was like, I want to fix it. And I was like, what? And so like in the back of my mind, I'm like, it's only because we're going to his parents' house to meet. Like he's, he's just saying this because he doesn't want to tell his parents that he was with my best friend and he wants to divorce me. And so in the back of my mind, I was like, okay, whatever, you know, let's, you know, if that's what you say, yeah, we'll, I guess we'll 
figure it out. So we ended up talking to his parents and, and then we just kind of moved on. Like that was the end of it. Like, and, and so like I kept living in it and bringing it up and talking about how it hurt me and how I lost my best friend. And, and he would always be upset. Like, you know, I'm like, well, how would you feel about it? And he goes, well, I feel really bad because you lost your best friend because of me. And he would say things like that. And we would like drive past her house and I would look and he would be upset because I was looking and, and anyway, so that was it. That was the, the break breakdown, but we, we still didn't do anything other than just be together. And I would try to watch like arguing with him and trying to be not abusive, quote unquote, to what he said. Um, and so we just had our things and we, you know, I still was in control of the finances. Um, he grew up in a very clean home. So I felt like that's what he expected of me. And so I have four young kids and I'm doing the finances and cleaning the house and I'm doing it all. And I get mad at him and be like, why are you such a kid? Like, can't you just see like the dishes need done? Like, do I really need to ask you to do the dishes? You can clearly see the dishes. Like this is ridiculous. And he would get silent and he wouldn't say anything. He would just sit there. And then I get more mad because I'm very much of a talker as you can tell. (laughs) And so I was upset that he wasn't saying anything. So then I would go at him some more and scream at him some more and, you know, all these things. And he was a trooper. Like he, I mean, he would take it. He's like, you know, you make me feel like a little kid. And I was like, well, if the shoe fits, like, and like, he would start, had asked me for things and I would tell him, no, we don't have the money for it. And why do I always have to be the adult and controlling all the money and, you know, quit asking, like, I hate being the bad guy. Like, I want you to be able to have that but I can't let you have it because we can't financially have it. Like, and that was, it was so hard on me, like so hard because I do, I want him to have everything that he wants and I couldn't make it happen because our finances weren't there. Mm -hmm. And so, and he obviously didn't feel appreciated and he didn't feel, you know, like he was making enough because I'd always tell him he couldn't have things. You know, he got to the point where he would ask me if he could buy a pack of gum because I was that controlling over the money. Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't. And I would tell him yes or no. And all of his things that he wanted, he had to go through me and ask me first. Um, And so then I, we bought a new house. The, the fighting was still continued and I just felt like it was like normal, like couples fight, like this is normal. Like nobody's not like, you know, it's not perfect. And so we just continued on living our lives, giving our arguments. And, and like a couple months ago, I just felt like I wasn't connecting. Like we were in the motions, like we give each other a kiss. We give each other a hug we'd cuddle in bed, but it was empty. Like it felt empty. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, um, was looking on Facebook and one of my friends had suggested you and I wasn't, I wasn't even looking for anything. I didn't think that anything was really wrong. I mean, I was lacking that connection, but I didn't think, you know, I thought, well, maybe, you know, we're just in a slump or depressed, whatever, you know, we got a lot on our plates. Didn't think anything was wrong. Um, and then I found the six intimacy skills and I actually just started listening to the podcast. I was listening all day, every day. Like I caught up so fast and I just started at the beginning. And for me, like it made sense. Like all of it made sense. It was just clicking in my head and I was like, Oh my gosh. So I jumped in both feet. I started doing everything. I gave him all control. I told him, um, you're in control of all the money. Um, you're in charge, you know, and he still <laughs> struggles with it still. He's like, so can I get the shirt? And I'm like, you're in control. I don't know. 
Yeah, you can. You think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever you think, Wait, Dick. So what was the look on his face when you said, oh, you know what? Here, you're in charge now. I think he was slightly overwhelmed because he was so used to me doing it. And so he he was, he was a little overwhelmed of, of having to deal with that because he's never, I've done all of it. You know, and I would make snarky comments like, oh, what would you do without me? You would be lost. You wouldn't know how to pay any bills and snarky comments like that because I did. I did it all. (sighs) And so I, you know, had listened to the podcast, listened to like the interviews and I was like, this works. I'm going to do it. It's going to happen. So I gave him all that and I started looking for the evidence that he loved me. And it was there all the time, mm-hmm. all the time. He gets up with me with the kids. He gets them dressed and he would make my bed and he would help with everything. He was always trying to make me happy. And I didn't see it. I was, I was never happy because I was so overloaded. And I started doing self-care and people would ask me, well, what's your hobbies? And I'm like, hobbies? I don't have hobbies. I'm a mom. I work full time. Like they're like, well, in your free time. time. Yeah. There's no free time. What do you mean free time? Um, and so I told him that I want self care and that it needs to be a priority so that I can be my best self. And he was all for it. He's like, yeah, you do. You need this. And so he, I ended up taking up a hobby and making Reese and I went and bought a ton of supplies, like just went crazy. Um, and then the, he was looking at the bank statement. He goes, you spent how much at the store? And I told him and he, he kind of chuckles and he goes, good. I'm glad you deserve it. Oh. <laughs> and so, I mean, he just, uh, everything. And then, uh, um, Valentine's day came around and he ended up getting me a necklace that says sometimes the most difficult roads have the most beautiful destinations. Um, and he gave me that. Um, and then he uh, gave me a, a plaque for our room, um, that says, I love you not because you're perfect, but because you're perfect for me. Oh. And he wrote me this beautiful card saying that he saw the change in me and saw my effort. Um, and that he just loved me so much. And, and so, you know, I started telling him, thank you for everything. Like, thank you for packing lunches. Thank you for getting up with the kids. Thank you. I mean, cause he would do it all. He would. And I just, you know, he's supposed to, he's the husband, you know, but he, he does, he wants that appreciation and, and that respect. And I, like, I would, you know, tell him thank you and all those things. But so so this is that must have felt like a million bucks when he acknowledged all the changes that you've made. Like he sees yeah. the difference in you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you, okay. So, and, and so before that had it felt empty. Oh yeah. Right. And now yeah. and and then and this is just a couple months we're talking, right? This oh is, yeah, just a couple months. Yeah. Okay. So like, like I started podcasting probably February, and here we are May. So yeah. Yeah. And by, by Valentine's day, you were already getting yeah. a better response. So yeah. yeah. So, um, so <laughs> I have so many questions. Okay. So first of all, going back to the self care, how did yeah. you, so you started making wreaths, but like, how mm-hmm. did you find the time for that? You have four kids that are only, the oldest is only what? Five, four. Yep. Mm-hmm. She five. just turned five. Yeah. Just turned five and you yeah. work full time. How, how did you make time for yourself? How, how does Kaylee get? Um, uh, so I just told him that it needs to be a priority. I need it. I need my mom time and it needs to happen. And so he takes the kids while you're yep. doing stuff. Oh, yep. Okay. So he's okay. okay. Yep. All right. And, so, and you get stuff and every day. Do, yeah. 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 Or if I want to go out with my friends, he'll, he's all for it. He's like, I'll take them and you can go out and you know, I'll, I got a big jetted tub and I'll just sit and soak sometimes or, you know, just sitting on my phone 
and not being bothered. And, yeah. yeah. And so, and, and were you terrified when you, to let him be in charge of all the money? Oh my gosh. What's I terrified? <laughs> oh, terrified because I had all the proof before on why he couldn't do it. Right. And so, right. yeah. It was a lot of faith over fear for that one, big time. So, big how did time. you find that faith? Do you think, like, um, I think just knowing that he's a good guy and that he wants me happy, and he knows that finances are important to me, and that he would take that into account. That you know, it's you really important, did. and he'll do it. You changed your perspectives; they're pretty different. Oh, yeah. They're yeah, completely different. Okay, and so, yeah. and these these presents you're describing, like, and the beautiful messages, beautiful heart messages he's giving you, are proof that this you're getting a very different response. Mm-hmm. Um, very much from, so from your husband. Yeah. So, so, and when you you had this big breakdown with your best friend, I mean, more evidence you couldn't trust him. We had all kinds of evidence: the porn, the money, the best friend incident. And, um, but now it sounds like you do trust him. I do with everything. I do. I mean, I love it. How has this impacted your kids? Um, they seem a lot happier. You know what I was going to tell you, we were out to eat and I took my sister with us and she was like, you guys are happy. Like, I don't think I've ever seen you guys this happy. And I was like, oh, it's because of my book. Like, <laughs> And she, she was so funny because she was like, wait, does your husband read the book too? I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Just me, but it works. It works. And, you know, she was noticing it. And that was even more empowering that even an outsider, not in my marriage, could see that we were happy and it was working. And, and it's so that was, deal. it is, it is right. Cause I think we all, I know for me, I tried to keep a lot of the breakdowns quiet, you know, I was trying to keep that private and show a happy yeah. face, mm-hmm. but this is just you guys being you. It sounds like you were just out having a nice, you know, you were genuine, genuinely glowing happy. and she can yep. see. Yep. Wow. Totally impressive. And you're like, it's all good. So, and does your husband even know about the book and the podcast and stuff? Or he does. That, yeah. He does he know. Does. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He must know. Yeah. Cause you're here being interviewed right now. So he's got to yeah. be watching those four kids right now, I bet. Right. He is. He's yeah. keeping them very, very quiet. <laughs> so, so what's your tip for, so for a woman who's like where you were, where she finds her husband with her best friend, he says he wants a divorce. I mean, you, even in that moment, you just, it sounds like you just had tremendous faith. That was before the skills, but mm-hmm. you just had tremendous commitment and conviction in your marriage. Okay. It sounds like, yeah. um, or she's saying like, oh, my husband's just a big baby. I have to do everything. Um, what's your best tip for her? And she wants to have what you have now where he's mm-hmm. buying her, you know, making sure she's getting lots of self-care every day and, and giving okay. her these beautiful Saying he'll that come, you're perfect for him. Like she wants that kind of thing. Oh, what should yeah, she do? And he'll come home and he'll like pinch my bum. And any chance he gets, he'll like, it's so funny. We'll start like wrestling and then my kids will get in and, you know, and they think it's all fun. And so it's a big like family fun time. We didn't really have that before. We were always just barking at each other, barking at the kids. And so we're all just playing and happy and so to answer your question, I would say, oh man, I don't know. I just jumped in. I did. I did self-care. I showed respect. I showed gratitude. I relinquished control. Like I did. I just did it all. I was like, there's the proof. I'm doing it. And so I would say, look for the proof that he loves you. It's there. He loves you. He's You married him for a reason. We're here. He hasn't left you. And that's one thing I keep looking back on that night. He came home to me, even though he said he was done, he came home to me. And so as hard as it's to go back to that story, there is that proof. He asked me to come lay with him and he came home. And, and at the time, obviously I didn't think that was proof at all. You know, it was just him being him, but I can see now with my spectacles that he 
he did. He loved me and he he did that with me. Oh yeah. I I admire that so much that you, right. You could have seen that situation either way. And you chose this way that is really serving you and your four little people that depend on you and your husband to have this home court advantage Mm -hmm. where they get to wrestle with their parents now and laugh. (laughs) Right. So that's a big difference. That's a big difference. So, yeah. So if you, and I, and I love this, I love your backstory too, about how you were the oldest and you were even like, your mom would even say, this is my little, my other mother. Right. Because kind of reflects like we, it wasn't our marriages that created the, maybe some of the, the characteristics that we came into the marriage right. with, right? Right. Yeah. And, and you've looked back and really seen like, yeah, this is who I always was. This yep. is my personality. And it sounds like in some ways you've changed your personality. Like you yeah. are now, you're a different woman. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, we were watching some home videos and I was watching and I was like, holy cow, like I was controlling. Why didn't anybody stop me? Like, <laughs> Like we're having birthday parties and I'm pulling out the presents and telling them how to open their own gosh dang birthday presents and you know <laughs> you know and I was like oh my gosh like now looking at it I'm like holy cow I was in control of everything all the time and then there was pictures you. of me like standing in front of all my cousins directing them which way and and so I mean I just I was it was who I was and. I did it. <laughs> it, mu- it must have felt pretty funny at first. It must have felt pretty awkward to stop doing all that. Yeah. It? Oh, yeah. It was super weird. And like, I always felt like he expected the house to be clean, like always. And so I was always super stressed out about making sure the house is clean and making sure it's spick and span. And, and now I sit back. And there's loads of laundry on my couch right now. And my sink is full of dishes and it's there. And I don't even care. <laughs> and you, you look pretty happy right now. You don't like, so look like stressed out at all. No. And, and like he, even last night, I was slightly stressed out because we got home late and the kids needed the bath still. And we get up early. So I have to get everything ready the night before. And. That means packing lunches and getting their clothes out. And, and so I was getting the kids in the bath and, um, my aunt ended up calling me. And so I was in the phone on the phone for almost an hour and I come out, got the kids out of the bath. And I was like, Oh, we need to pack lunches still. Can you go start that? And I'll come help you, you know? And he was like, no. And I was like, what? I was like, no. He's like, maybe you should go look in the fridge before you start asking me to do something. Oh. And he had packed lunches. He did it. He packed lunches. I didn't ask him. I didn't tell him. He packed lunches. I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I love you. Like, yeah. So this is the same guy that couldn't even see all the dishes that needed to be done. You had to tell him about those dishes. This yep. guy figured yep. out, we need lunches for tomorrow and just went and took initiative and packed them. Yeah. Yep. Well, I love, I'm amazed. I'm impressed with your transformation. You seem like yep. you had a whole, yeah, this is, you're a different person than that one that was telling people how to open their birthday presents. <laughs> it's what, true. Very true. <laughs> what would you say to yourself if you could go back and talk to Kaylee from before? What would you say? Um, I would what tell her, go? quit being in control. You don't need to be in control. You don't. People are in charge of their own lives and they can manage themselves. I don't, I don't need to do it. I, it's not my responsibility. And I think that was part of my problem was I felt like I had to being the oldest girl. I felt like that was who I was and that's who I needed it. You know, they needed me to tell them what to do and how to do it. Like that was part of your value in the world. Like yeah. this, this, how you contribute to other people yeah. is by telling yeah. Yeah. How, how they should open their birthday present yeah. or whatever. Right. Yeah. 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 I yeah. totally, I'm only laughing because I just recognize, I mean, and identify with the, the same things that you're talking about. I was the oldest girl too. So yeah, I get it, Kaylee. Well, congratulations on just transforming your relationship 
into, it sounds like you have a beautiful family life now. Yes. My, I was going to tell you, my husband ended up having a relapse at porn recently. And, and previously before it was always a secret. Like he kept it from me because every time I found out, I freaked out about it, like freaked out and you know why I'm right here. There's no reason to be looking. Like, I don't understand why you're looking. I, you know, and I would let him have it every time I caught him. And this time he actually came to me and was like, I messed up. And that's the first time he'd ever done that. And I was like, oh my gosh. And he's like, I got out of it. I deleted it. I'm really, really sorry. Like, I'm I'm sorry it hurt you. Like, and I didn't say anything. I just listened. And he was so accountable with everything. And, you know, I was like, you know, I'm proud of you. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, that took a lot. I said, you came out and you straight up just told me and you took care of it. And I was like, you should be proud of yourself. Like that takes a lot. And so I felt super good about that because he felt safe to tell me like he's human and he made a mistake, but he was comfortable enough to be okay to tell me. You created emotional safety with your husband. Yeah. He knew it wasn't, you weren't going to bite his head off or get yep. way into him. Yeah. Pretty amazing. So would you say your husband has changed? Maybe a little bit. He, he was funny when I started saying the whatever you think. He, he kind of was like, um, I feel like that's kind of like saying it's fine when it's really not fine. And I was like, no, 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 no. I said, that's not, that's not what that is. I said, I'm telling you whatever you think, because I trust you and trust that you have our best judgment in your hand. And he took it, you know, and he still kind of sometimes is like, he'll even say it before I'll say it. He'll ask you a question. I'll be like, he's like, whatever you think. Yep. Whatever you think. <laughs> he says it to himself now. He does, he have to he say it. <laughs> yeah, that is impressive. It means you've said it so many times, right? That he, he the old dance yeah. is the old dance. This new dance yeah. is the one we're doing now. And he knows yep. it. And like, I, if I, cause I'm not perfect, we're still working on the skills. I haven't even finished your book yet. I'm not even done yet, but he has even like, I'll snap and then I'll turn around and say, I'm sorry, that was disrespectful. Um, and so there's been a time where he snapped at me and he did the same thing. He goes, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That was disrespectful. And so there's been change. There's been change that way. I think for him, um, because I'm more accountable, he feels more accountable, but I also feel like, I think just my perspective on him has changed. Like I've looked, my grandma has always taught me, um, her wedding advice for me was look for the positive. The more you look for the positive, the more you find the more you look for the negative, the more you find. And so I think now that I've got the skills, I know where to look for that positive. I didn't think I wasn't not looking for the positive. I just didn't know what was positive. And now that I have the skills, I can, I can see it. I can see where he's being loving and trying to make me happy and all those things. So yes and no to changing, but yeah. Yeah. Well, just this piece about him being accountable with the porn and just coming to you and saying, I messed up and I, I don't want to do that again. That sounds like it's different from yeah, very much different. Yeah. I was, I was like, Oh my gosh. And my friend that actually suggested you to me, she, I texted her and I was like, Oh my gosh, like he had a relapse, but he came to me and he told me, and she was so happy. She's like, it looks like he's, he feels safe. And I was like, yep. He does. Mm-hmm. Right. And he's, you, you've, become your best self you're being your best self and yeah. it sounds like he's also wants to be a better man yeah and it's kind of funny i told him i was like we've been around a couple of other marriages that have that are haven't found the skills yet um and that both of us can look at it and be like oh my gosh i'm like i'm just so glad i'm not grumpy anymore <laughs> yeah so glad you're not grumpy anymore <laughs> Uh, and so, yeah. Yeah. So you can laugh about the bad old days now. Yeah, we can. Yeah. <laughs> in the happily ever after. Yeah. 
And it sounds like you feel like a Disney princess. I do. I do all the time. <laughs> For Mother's Day, he got me this beautiful figurine of a, a mom holding her baby up next to her face and like super sweet, like the best. Oh, sentimental <laughs> even. And this yes. is from a man who couldn't buy a pack of gum without your permission. Like he, he he's, wow. And here's all these yeah. beautiful gifts he's been wanting to give you. Oh man. Yeah. He gave me a frying pan and most people would be like, a frying pan, really? And I just showered him with praise. I was like, you know, and I love my frying pan. <laughs> it's that freaking frying pan. <laughs> but he thought about me and he knew I liked, you know, I, I do like to cook and, and so it was thoughtful. And I wouldn't have looked at that before. I'd be like, why did you bring me a frying pan? It's you know, romantic, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. No, I loved it. And I use it all the time. And he's like, don't you love that frying pan? Yes, babe. I love that frying pan. <laughs> So. so cute. Well, I love all these specific examples, right? Because I think that's so useful for oh, any woman who's listening thinking, how do you do this? That's a, what a great example. He got me a frying pan and I love it. It was thoughtful. I do. <laughs> you found, yeah, you found the upside and you do, and you do. So, well, very inspiring. Congratulations on your wonderful marriage and your happy family. That is such a big accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I think a lot of it comes from you. So thank you for teaching the skills and it, it's awesome. I'm glad we found each other. Yes, me too. <laughs> I shout you from the rooftop. I just tell everybody. <laughs> and I, my sister-in-law I was like, you really need some self-care. And she's like, I do have self-care. I'm like, no, listen, <laughs> you need some self-care. <laughs> she's like, well, I do my makeup. I'm like, no, no, listen. <laughs> You need some self-care. So I've been sharing you with everybody. I have even had like, obviously my mom is divorced, but I still like make her listen. And because I think the skills aren't just for married women. Like I think mm-hmm. it works for everybody. I mean, I feel like my relationship with my sisters are better because of the skills and it just, the skills are to better yourself really. Like you bettering yourself ends up bettering everything around you. And so I think the skills are useful for everybody. I could not agree more. It's so true. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Thank you. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fix a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. And now it's time for the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award. It's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice. Yeah, it's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week. And the advice that I find most insufferable this week was sent to me by one of the coaches. So before I share it, Here's a big shout out to you with my gratitude for your contribution to the podcast. I love to hate the advice that you sent and I love you for sending it. So thank you. So here's what she found on an Instagram post. And I think you'll see why I'm so excited to award it the worst relationship advice of the week award. The author starts with this quote, which she says is from Einstein. I've never heard this quote from Einstein, but she says, you can't keep getting mad at people for sucking the life out of you. You keep giving them the straw. And then she goes on to write, people only change if they want to change. When they truly listen to you, see a problem in their behavior and earnestly want to behave better. This quote helped me understand why I felt like I was the crazy one and eventually I claimed my power and walked away. And the coach's comment was, obviously, she didn't have the right skills. And I completely agree. So she thought the choices 
were to complain about someone until they wanted to change and then they changed so she could finally be happy. Or the other choice was to end the relationship. Those were her only options. And I have a lot of compassion for her in that because I used to think the same thing. I thought my husband was never going to change. And the only self-respecting thing to do was to leave. So I almost ended my marriage. And that would have been so tragic because I have a dreamy husband. I have an amazing husband. And it's the same man. Same man. So what's another option besides complaining and hoping they change, which never works in my experience, or leaving and framing it as self-respect, right? Uh, Another option is to change your side of the dance. And in this case, she even lays out at least one dynamic where she was likely going wrong. And that is complaining to her person about how he needed to change. That's the illusion. You know, the illusion in my marriage was that if he would just change, I would be happy. But that never, ever turned out to be true. It can't be true. And when I decided to look at what I had control over, like myself, my attitude, my self-care, my gratitude, well, it was actually a very unpleasant moment because uh, I was forced to reckon with how I hadn't had a very good attitude or very good self-care or been very grateful. So it was pretty horrifying, actually. But it was also so empowering because when I adjusted my attitude by adjusting my self-care and I started counting my blessings, well, guess who responded to me so much better? My husband. He seemed so much nicer and more attentive. Who would have guessed that that would happen? Huh? But we never would have gotten there if I just kept telling him what the problem was with his behavior and waited for him to earnestly want to behave better or if I'd left. And for that reason, this advice that people only change if they want to change when they truly listen to you, see a problem in their behavior and earnestly want to behave better. Eventually I claimed my power and walked away. But that is the worst relationship advice I have heard all week. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, we'll talk about how to become a relationship coach. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that this week I was reminded that close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, not in volleyball. But when do you ever get to play hand grenades? I mean, I never have. 